Hi there! Today, for the last video on my Tyranid paint scheme series, I'd like to bring things full circle and show how the NPS method I developed can be applied to more traditional Tyranid schemes to paint them quickly and easily. As always, I start with inspiration from nature, in this case the praying mantis. There are many species of mantids, and I think it'll be fun to combine visual elements of several subspecies. So, I start with a white primer as normal, but rather than start from this white base, I'm going to do something a little different. I take Viejo model color lime green and apply a thinned layer of this to everything but the claws, hooves, and flesh borer. Notice that it hasn't achieved full coverage. The white undercoat shows through, particularly on the edges, so this has had an effect more like a very heavy wash. With that done, the first step of the MPS method is defining the carapace pattern. This time, I'm going to use a traditional streaked chitin look. I mix lime green and white in equal proportions and apply some quick and dirty stripes to the carapace. Because the lime green didn't fully cover to begin with, this mix doesn't show up especially well, but it does provide a subtle basis for the next step, which is applying streaks of pure white to the edges. With that done, the carapace is effectively highlighted, so now it's on to shading. For this scheme, however, I think I'll rely on the all-over wash coming later to define the shading on the carapace, so I'll skip this step and instead just clean up the white where necessary. Now the details. I use Army Painter's Strong Tone and apply it to the vents. I'm going for speed, so I'll skip applying it to the joints. Notice how I've skipped the vents on the flesh borer. For the gun, I think I want it to resemble the coloration of the Orchid Mantis for a bit of contrast. So I use Army Painter Red Tone and apply it to the vents on the flesh borer for a more pink coloration. The next step in the process is to paint the claws and hooves, but since I've left the claws and hooves white, I can skip this step and paint them exclusively with the all over wash that's coming next. For the main exoskeleton wash, I think I want to use the strong mix and use Strong Tone again to keep it dark but still have some warmth to the color. So I mix two parts Strong Tone with one part Quick Shade Wash Mixing Medium and one part Water and brush this over the entire model. When that's dry, I apply a second layer. In less than 30 minutes of work, I've painted everything but the final details and I think the shading and faux highlighting have come out well. However, the result is pretty monotone, and while naturalistic, it lacks the pop of the other schemes I've demonstrated. Let's go back and adjust a bit. I think I want to dial up the Orchid Mantis inspiration. I take Viejo model color Brown Rose and apply two layers of this to the carapace to get a solid color. Brown Rose is a fleshy tan color that I normally use for Caucasian skin tones, but when put next to the lime green it appears more pinkish by contrast. Now that I have a solid coat of the Brown Rose, I'll replicate the chitin streaking technique from earlier. I start with an equal parts mix of Brown Rose and White. It's looking good, but I'm not sure I'm ready to jump straight to white, so I mix one part brown rose to three parts white and do another layer. These layers go so quickly that it doesn't feel tedious to add more intermediate steps, but I could skip this if I really wanted to finish it quickly. And lastly, I use pure white and keep it to just the edges. Now that the carapace is highlighted, I'll apply the same wash mix that I did all over the model earlier. If I had started with this coloration in mind for the carapace, it would have been washed at the same time as the rest of the model. When it's dry, I apply a second layer. Now the scheme is much more distinct. At this point I'm happy with the result, so it's time for the eyes, teeth, and varnish to finish the model. Here's the final result. It's accidentally come very close to the High Fleet Gorgon scheme. If I painted the flesh borer and claws with dark tone rather than the brown exoskeleton wash, it'd be almost spot on for the official art. Well, as I mentioned at the start, this will be the last video for now on Tyranid paint schemes and the NPS method. I hope you found it useful. In the coming weeks, I'll be sharing some content on painting terrain and magnetizing tyranids, but feel free to leave a comment if there's something else you'd like to see. And thanks for watching.